Geometric, as you've heard, provides web software and marketing services to the healthcare industry. We are a 16-year-old company with about 73 employees located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Over the years, Geometric has won numerous awards for our technology, our growth, our leadership, and especially our workplace culture. A little over two years ago, we made some radical changes in an effort to give employees even more autonomy and freedom. We completely eliminated the manager role, so employees now work in self-organizing teams that prioritize and manage their own work. We expanded the Agile software methodology that we use within the software team across the organization. What that means is all work is visible and product is delivered in short iterations. So the focus is on continuous learning and improvement and value is defined by the market or the client. And finally, we ditched traditional annual performance reviews. Feedback comes from the teams, it's immediate, and it's built into the system. We've had the same four success metrics for years. The top two are financial, they are top line growth and bottom line profitability, and the other two are more subjective, they're client and employee satisfaction. But employees are bonused based on those top three. In the spirit of transparency, we have always shared our satisfaction scores publicly and shared the financial information with employees in every monthly company meeting. Despite all of that, at the end of the first year of this transition, our results weren't good. Fortunately, our client satisfaction scores remained high, which means our clients didn't see the turmoil, but inside the company, our growth dip, profitability, and employee satisfaction scores all sort of tanked. Employees were, that's sort of the nice way of saying it, employees were confused and they were unhappy and it showed both in our culture and our financial results. We thought the problem might have to do with the mechanics of team decision making in a flat organization, so we brought in an agile trainer to help us with that. After a couple of hours of working with the teams, he suggested an exercise called impact mapping. It's a tool to align or map the work a team does to the impact it has on an organization. You start with the goal, identify who can make that goal happen or not, the influences that steer their decisions, and the actions I control that make the outcome that I want or avoid the one I don't. Given that we'd articulated the goals, shared the information every month, and gave them money based on that, this should have been a piece of cake, right? But it wasn't. And where employees got stuck was on that very first box, they could not articulate our goals. And that was a breakthrough moment for me. I realized, and I love bad analogies, but I realized it was like handing my car keys to a 15-year-old child without any training or any advance warning. Just because she's ridden, been along for the ride for 15 years doesn't mean she knows how to automatically be successful in the driver's seat. Just sharing data doesn't mean employees can understand, use, or retain that information. Feeling accountable doesn't mean I know the right thing to do. Having autonomy and power doesn't feel like freedom if I don't know what direction I should be going. It feels like fear. Iterating quickly without understanding the path I should be on doesn't mean I'm necessarily learning anything. So decentralization doesn't automatically mean that teams can step into their power. What we needed to do was some serious training around business in our business and financial information in general. Then we needed to help, team, help employees map their work and their team's work to the collective goals. And at that point, then the exec team could step back and let teams step forward into their power. And that's exactly what we did. We started with financial training. Financial terms can be confusing, and not everybody knows the difference between contract value and cash flow and revenue recognition and net income and all of those other words that we use to define how we do financially. So we taught them. And then we broke our financials out by teams. Every team, well, nearly every team has its own P&L and we included those teams in our annual, annual budgeting process. And then every month, the CFO and I sat with each team to deliver their monthly financial results and explain it to the team. With that basis, we did our own version of an impact map. I spent countless hours walking each team through our impact mapping process, and out of the end of it came this laundry list of all of the things we could do.
But a laundry list isn't very helpful in and of itself. So we took it one step further, and each team ended up with a list of the top two or three things that they could do to help the company achieve those goals. Each team then created a mission statement. We know why we exist, and we know the value we provide to the organization, and a rally cry that gave them guidance and direction and added a little bit of fun. And then because we love post-it notes of all sizes, each team created a poster. And you can see they're not pretty and they're not polished, but they're useful. Employees refer to these every week in their planning and they update them every month with our actual results. With that, we changed how we do company meetings and we added what we call a team demo meeting. No longer do the CEO, the CFO, and I stand in front of the company and tell them how they did this month. Instead, teams send a representative up to the stage and they tell their story. Here's what we planned to do, here's what we actually did. Here are the results, both successes and failures, what we learned from that, and what we'll do differently next time. The impact our work had on our financial goals and anything we plan to do next month that might impact another team or that we might need help from them. The change in the organization has been phenomenal to watch. Employees talk differently among themselves within teams and across teams, and they feel a sense of accountability, ownership, and pride. As a result, 2014 was our best year ever. Our growth rebounded substantially, our profitability was nearly double what we had forecast, and employees are happier. In fact, in our last employee satisfaction survey, we had 100% participation. Our highest category was commitment to Geonetric, and our most improved category was our Agile culture. Employees now understand their purpose, and they have the mastery and the autonomy to deliver on their commitments. In other words, they work in a freedom-centered workplace, and the results of decentralization speak for themselves. Thank you.